QS Dharwar. So uh, we, we know the problem that uh, with the population, the nutrient management, the agronomic fortification or the agronomic practices that have been there, the pesticides and the environmental pollutions that are been happening with conventional breeding has uh, led to the new technologies, new frontiers. And one of the new frontiers is the nanotechnological approaches. And uh, we'd like to deal with uh, all these things. And uh, again, as I said, the precision farming, crop protection. So uh, in US, Dhawad, how did we really begin? the proof of concepts and the hypothesis what we believed and what we are able to translate that into certain uh, products so our uh, nanotechnological research is being christened as uh, the green nanobiotechnology lab so all we know that uh, it is good that we use green molecules and come up with nano products instead of uh, the chemical which on many occasions have been or on all the occasions have proved to be uh, quite toxic to the environment and uh, the simple process that's going to happen is uh, the reduction when you use secondary metabolites from any of the plants or any of the living organisms and then go with the capping so reduction capping and the stabilization of uh, the nanoparticles is quite feasible and easy and that's why we have only adopted in us dhawar with the green uh, synthesis characterization and its application in various crops like uh, it's a redox reaction and uh, where we can use almost all the uh, living things right from algae fungi bacteria and plant products and convert them taking some of the elemental compounds to the nanoparticles in vivo so the phytochemicals will definitely mediate and it can synthesize a eco-friendly nanoparticles so initially we started uh, with the zinc nanoparticles with the calotropis osimum azadirecta datura and uh, camellia so we were not uh, used to the processing of all these materials but still then we initially started with these products and uh, we tried to test them with the different uh, crops, especially maize. Then we also used copper nano, synthesized copper nanoparticles and uh, the silicon uh, with the neem seeds kernels where we were able to get uh, the good nano materials. Then we used uh, the uh, uh, silver nanoparticles with the gossypium hirsutum that is with the cotton leaf extract and we try to control the xanthomonas species uh, so these are all some of the areas which where we are pondering so we didn't have the stability to do all these things but these are the initial stages where we synthesize zinc nanoparticles using moring olriflora then uh, again the iron nanoparticles with uh, the same uh, plant product and these are uh, some of the green synthesized nanoparticles at US Dharwad by using some of the plant products. These are some of the uh, plant products using different uh, the plant products. It may be stem, leaf or uh, other any part of the seed. Then we did also synthesize uh, the microbial nanoparticles. Uh, different chemicals which are being enlisted over here are being done at US Dawar. So I was deputed to US to uh, go in for uh, the nanotechnological research hands-on training uh, to Temu and also Cornell. After I coming down from the US after my training, we initiated the real nanotechnological uh, process, how to go ahead and the research. We have so many areas to ponder upon but uh, we thought only let's focus at the initial stages with uh, the fertilizer management and uh, the plant disease management biofortification nano seed treatment since i come from uh, the department of seed science and technology more thirst or more focus was on the seed uh, areas where we could go for biofortification and seed storage and also the enhancement of germination through different nanoparticles we have tried and we are able to get some of the 
uh, good results and also in textiles where the nanoparticles can be used in textiles to have uh, the anti uh, bacterial properties or also some of the colors that are being naturally dyed can be of uh, much more better so these are some of the works that we have uh, uh, taken up they are problem specific nano research in uh, chili wheat cotton stylosanthus onion and soybean I'm not going to go in detail about all the works that are being carried out because it is a voluminous uh, presentation. I would like to restrict down to some of the general presentation. And uh, we did also the work on uh, the insect management in cotton, soybean, and also disease uh, in terms of tomato, soybean. And to be very, very specific with a few of the research that are being carried out uh, through the nanotechnological approaches in uh, entomology, like uh, we wanted to have uh, the uh, nano products based on, on the some of the insecticides are also with the pheromones. We tried with the nano encapsulation, nano powders, and we also used the plant products with uh, the elements like uh, silver. It was very, very effective. Even zinc was very, very effective in control of some of the diseases. So we tried on uh, Spodoptera litera, so how it's going to have the impact on Spodoptera litera. So the damage that it can cause to the, uh, where we use silver nanoparticles. And also we used uh, the uh, same silver nanoparticles in the larval mo mortality in case of the Spodoptera. At what specific stage it's going to be more effective? Uh, that study we did. And uh, copper and silver uh, nanoparticles against the sucking pest also we have evaluated in some of the crops. And um, these are some of the images that how it's going to have an impact the healthy one and uh, after it's been treated with uh, the silver nanoparticles how the insects are going to uh, deformed or which are being killed the mortality is being considerably reduced and uh, we also studied the phytotoxicity of those uh, nanoparticles with simple studies then the storage entomology and uh, we worked with the pulse beetle and uh, we were able to take up some of the studies with the pulse beetle and also with the pigeon pea. So we compared the normally available melothion, uh, the castroy with the copper nanoparticles and the silver nanoparticles. With this, when compared to the chemicals, the nanoparticles were equally capable in controlling of uh, the pulse beetle in green gram and uh, we thought would take forward the copper nanoparticles as well as the silver nanoparticles in our studies. Likewise, we have studied some of the chemicals that have been available in the market and it gave us a very encouraging results that uh, silver nanoparticles and the copper nanoparticles at uh, 1000 ppm and 500 ppm, uh, 750 ppm were able to control the same storage pest with the green gram as well as the pigeon pea. So uh, we just evaluated that and uh, 1000 ppm of uh, silver nanoparticles as well as copper nanoparticles gave us a very good results as compared to many of the treatments that were with uh, again as on par with delta methrin and definitely it was very very superior as compared to the control. Then uh, these are some of the slides like 1000 ppm silver and 1500 uh, ppm silver and 2000 ppm silver. All this were able to control the uh, storage pest in case of the green gram, so as the copper. So we can see over here in this particular slide where it was treated with the castor, then the control and the delta methane. The castor as well as the delta methane were also equally effective as of nanoparticles but in control we would see that uh, even after nine months there was a recurrent population that were able to be seen so again uh, this is about uh, the uh, t1 and t4 at 1000 ppm it was able to control the uh, have higher 
germination in green gram right so this was also an increasing factor that we can use this as uh, the best way to store the seeds with silver and copper then we could also study the uh, stereo microscopic images of the pulse beetle where in control all the parts were intact no deformity but where it was treated with the nanoparticles like uh, silver copper the deformities were considerable and this led to believe us that we can very effectively use these nanoparticles for our uh, seed storage and even we had good germination as compared to the control so you can see the seedling length root length shoot length was quite enormous and healthy so we did also studies the alpha amylase after taking of the experiments with these studies and we could get the good results for the alpha amylase with the seed treated with the nano particles then again dehydrogenase enzyme to prove that they are not toxic to the system then uh, some of the um, chemicals 500 ppm and uh, the normal chemical control was being compared and uh, we can see in the control there are a lot of uh, pigeon pea which are being bored and also you can see the successive generation of uh, the insects that's been over there so this is uh, we all we are also trying against the fall army worm and uh, it has given us very good results and um, silver and zinc nanoparticles at 500 ppm and 1000 ppm have given very good results and the experiments are still going on in the maze and uh, we also tried with uh, the plant pathology and uh, that's how we are able to have the synthesis of the chitosan particles again the synthesis of silver nanoparticles we tried with the sunlight with the microwave and uh, also with heat so where we were able to synthesize different uh, kinds of uh, nanoparticles and uh, we try to have an alternative to the streptocycline which nanoparticles could be good because the only antibacterial product that's been available is the streptocycline so could we replace with the nanoparticles that studies were also being taken up and uh, we found that um, the 100 ppm silver nanoparticle was quite on par as compared to the streptocycline so that the resistance whatever uh, the plants are developing against this streptocycline could also be considerably brought down so we studied for uh, the nectarotic and the toxic symptoms of uh, the nanoparticles that we used and again the same slide over here uh, we have seen with the colonies that are being used for our studies and uh, we can see that uh, in charcoal rot of the soya bean by using the trichoderma hyacinthum as uh, the mediator that is uh, the green way of synthesizing nanoparticles with the silver in combination at 170 ppm it gave us the best results of 94% uh, control and uh, we can see 170 where this slide represents that it doesn't have any colonial growth of for that particular pathogen again uh, zinc was also been tried and uh, this was 200 ppm gave us the best results and we can see that no colony is being grown in that 200 ppm of uh, zinc nanoparticles and uh, the seedling evaluation was also very very good as compared to the control we were able to get a very good seedling healthy and disease free when we treated with these silver and zinc then we tried with the groundnut also groundnut has a lot of foliar disease and we wanted to control and uh, here we used one as a seed treatment another as a foliar application we doubled the foliar application so 400 ppm of silver and uh, 
800 ppm of uh, the same materials as a foliar spray we are able to control many of the foliar these are two species jl24 and ds256 which were and the uh, jl24 is highly susceptible to the foliar diseases and we are able to have good results out of uh, this particular silver at uh, 400 and 800 ppm in both the varieties so uh, main thrust area is in the seed science and technology as i come from that and uh, we can use uh, nano seed treatments in way like uh, seed priming micronutrients endophytes microbes and uh, nano seed biofortification zinc iron seed treatment insecticides and also as uh, the fungicides seed invigoration technique and also in the seed storage so I, I need not highlight much on the C treatment chemicals. You know that uh, it is about 75% of them are neonicotinoids and uh, the already the first uh, generation chemical, Captain and Hiram, which are the old chemistry. Now they are being phased out and you also have this first generation uh, now new chemicals, metalexyl and uh, mephanoxam. But these are also being phased out with new chemicals and we thought that we can replace with the nanoparticles for the seed treatment and the global seed volume, the business seed treatment volume is 7.36. That's the current year and it's growing annually at 8.3 and uh, we wanted to bring in a new nano based seed treatment chemicals and we are working right now the bear crop science and syngenta they control 75 percent of the c treatment chemicals uh, and again they are into the nano formulations and this will have a great way forward so these are some of the pathways what we studied so in that uh, how does a chemical goes into the seed it will have to diffuse to the seed coat and if the seed coat is going to block those chemicals it will have another entry root tip right so we try to study why this particular problem has been happening and uh, what are the chemicals that are responsible for uh, the entry of the chemicals or any material to get into the seeds and these are uh, some of the chemicals that we uh, it's already been known because of the life of solicity molecular size electrical conductivity the chemicals that we intend to put into the seeds are not been happening and uh, seed coat permeability test is being done and where we use cumarin non-ionic and uh, rhodomain b ionic so if it is able to pass through with these two chemicals they are permeable and only cumarin non-ionic and uh, rhodomain if it doesn't pass that is selective permeability of the seed coat and if it is not going to enter at all that is non permeability. We tried uh, with the different uh, seeds like uh, soybean, where we have permeable seed coat characteristic, and also with the uh, tomato, onion, pepper, where it is a selective. And we can also go in like uh, onion seeds, the cumarin is being able to get into the through the uh, seed coat. Uh, not the seed coat but only at the radical emergence the rhodomain is being able to get into so cumarin with the seed coat and uh, the rhodomain with the radical emergence so this gives us what are the different types of chemicals which are being able to and we need to design the nanoparticles to penetrate the seeds based on this but fortunately the nanoparticles are going to pass these two stages like selective permeability and uh, also even the seeds which are uh, uh, non-permeable so uh, the nanoparticles owing to their size even if the seed coat is non-permeable also this is been able to penetrate and it can diffuse more easily so these studies confirmed and uh, we are uh, working with dry blending uh, so these are some of the uh nano products where we can use in the seed for seed coating 
and we tried uh, one area where we worked was uh, to control the murda complex in the chile which is a burning problem and uh, it it was tried and uh, we had very good uh, results for the silver as well as the zinc nanoparticles and this was mediated through the microbes we use actinobacteria we used uh, subtilis and um, another uh, right so silver zinc and uh, bacillus these are uh, udp 209 this we got it from uh, the department of microbiology and these uh, particular zinc and silver they were able to be better converted and uh, and another thing what we got it from uh, the actonia bacteria is that higher amount of uh, the ga3 synthesis was being found and because it being the secondary metabolite it was able to enhance the seed growth at a faster rate so we are trying to use all these even microbes to formulate nano and uh, we are able to get very healthy as compared to the control so we tried with different hydropriming control so even uh, the chili what we used the fruits what we harvested had greater biomass when we treated with them but higher concentration there was a deformity so we need to boil down to the best uh, possible seed treatment uh, that's in ppm we are working on that and seed invigoration studies where so the uh, seeds are highly uh susceptible to their losing viability because of their storage so can we enhance the seed immigration we have uh, worked out with the onion then nano fertilizers uh we have only tried with uh, the magnesium and the zinc nanoparticles to control the reddening of the cotton so in the first slide you can see the reddening of the cotton especially with the bt cotton it's very very high and when we use these two as uh, the nanoparticles the reddening was uh, almost negligible in the plots where we took up the spray so this is another area and uh, biofortification is another area where we are working with the zinc and uh, the iron these two are the important uh, elements that we want to in and we can see that uh, the zinc and iron have been considerably increased in the grains that were biofortified and nanobiotechnology we have tried to get into and uh, the only uh, work that has been carried out is the profenfos being uh, uh, encapsulated with the liposome and we have uh, got good results and the paper is also been published uh, in high ranking journal and uh, these are the future line of work what we are interested so um, uh, since I, i have been only in the nanotechnology and uh, most of the staff members they come from different uh, faculty so the background at which they have to apply nanotechnology is uh, still very very primitive in way and uh, uh, we don't have uh, a full fledged nanotechnological department like as you have over here and many of the scientists are being uh, uh, in association and uh, they are working with us and uh, we are trying to come out with some of the future products uh, some of the papers that are being published are in the uh, nano materials where uh, in the month of june i have been invited to deliver a guest lecture at uh, the nano material conference which is going to be held in london so i have been invited over there to speak on this then uh, scientific re reports we have also worked on hypergravity though it is not with the nano uh, one of our scientist who has come from uh, the us we have worked its effect on the seed on the hypergravity then we have uh, saw the couple of papers that are being published in and uh, this is another paper where we have published and uh, uh, this is a book chapter and of course these are uh, another paper has been accepted for uh, publication in scientific report and un one paper is been accepted with the nano today 
and another we have submitted to the nature and probably we may hear soon about its publication so these are some of the few of the okay these are our uh, publications and uh, students who are, who have worked within uh, four years there are about 40 students who have completed their msa as well as a phd so after i taking over i was able to collaborate with many of the departments and uh, these are some of our uh, students who have already submitted uh, the phd thesis and uh, presently some of them are working in different areas so thank you very much and uh, this is a simple presentation i i did not go in very very specific because uh, already you had the first session with specific information and uh, i didn't want it to bombard with all those things and i i think uh, nanotechnology is such a multi-dimensional area probably if you shift from one area to another area probably you'll be zero so unless you know the background of that particular science we can talk about synthesis characterization which is uh, quite formal to all the sciences but when you come to the science to be very specific it takes a lot of understanding and that's why i i have not gone in with specific presentation and it's in general pre presentation thank you very much you have given a very good uh, detailed nanoparticles though you, you may not have a well sophisticated instrument and other things but your work is uh, speaking with uh, extroverts you have covered most of the faculty soil science e technology entomology how come the nanoparticles can be applied for storage pest and other pest and disease management and one question i would like to ask you somebody have mentioned about the actinobacteria have a ga3 in between a bacteria and fungi this is called actinobacteria yeah. uh, it's a very new to me the information is very quite new to me because all the microbes which produce like what we call a pgpr it produce all the ga3 axin gibberellic acids and iaa but it's quite a new information to me because we are so far concentrating on actinobacteria for biocontrols secondary metabolites like that bio uh, refineries biofuel like that but for seed emergency it helps a lot it's quite a new information we'll check it out because yeah. <laughs> i'm mean, sorry i have not noted it uh microbiologically it helps a lot and your future line of work you had given degradation of the nanoparticles what's the need sir we, because nanoparticles nanomaterials nowadays everyone uh, they that uh, nanomaterials are very toxic to the environment this is the question quote by public domains but to balance that a uh, scientist we people we have to work it on the nanomaterials from biogenic or microbes so what's the need to go for degradation again it will dissolve into the soil or air or water it may be what's the need to go for accept it the question is uh, being in the department of nanotechnology what i used to always fight we don't go for synthetics we should go for only the polymers in so many research you have done it kitasan and etc etc for treatment different treatment with nanoparticles as a carrier material in such case the bioefficacy test and how it has been dissolved into the soil or water what are the material this is a core material of covering the core components so in such case the test may be it's okay but in what way you are going to see the pathway when you add for simple example i'll ask one question sir kitasan everywhere unique universal they are using it when you apply as a kitasan is a nano carrier material for your core components why when you are applying to the field what's the need for going for degradation studies you know pretty good it's a polymer organic yes. directly as for human consumption also we are taking that to the polymers so yeah. <laughs> uh, different polymers organically or biogenically derived from we are using it my question is only not for making things yeah. uh, but it's a open platform you can ask questions okay anyhow on behalf of the department of nanotechnology since our regular professor and head is on tour the uh, endemic problem which is in pollachi area the wilt process the entire university scientists have, along with the students and research scholar they have been visited so i am taking this opportunity on behalf of dr m prashant rajan and i would like to honor our external examiner 
and with uh, effort yes present though yes uh, in uh, c technology specialist with a lot of application of the uh, nano materials and nano particles and synthesis characterizations and bioefficacy tests and prototype laboratory tests this might be the opening minds to the students of nanotechnology you are little bit you are working on only on npk fertilizers but little bit you have to go like this this type of research how he has dissipated his research with different department so this is the eye opening for you people please go and connect with him for any internship or any short term training with the darwad at least you go for a month 